Is this the hot seat? Alright. That's the hot seat. Alright. <laughs> See what happens. I'm gonna wait for our tech guy to say it's good to go. Hold on, I'm logging in. <laughs> Good. Hey, welcome back, everybody. I hope you enjoyed the presentation. And here we are with two of the biggest VPs in the company, Eric Johnstone and Daryl Starkweather. And well, this is unique. We're going to be able to spend a few minutes with them and just ask them some questions and, you know, let them do their part to share with us what the corporate office is all about. But as you know, we got to play and have fun. So, question number one what's the next state? <laughs> I, I, like, I, to say, I like my job, Daryl can answer that. <laughs> <laughs> but I know how we can find out. Simulcast. Simulcast January 30th. Are you registered? Yes. You know? Yes. Now here's the thing, you gotta have your team registered as well, folks. Right? It's one thing for you to be registered, but if you're there and your group's not, it's not gonna do you as much good. So I, I'm gonna ask Eric, because he is the, the Mr. Boom himself. Mm -hmm. I'm going to ask him just, you know, the importance of our two big events, the simulcasts and the ambitions every year. Thanks, Rick. I'll kind of answer it, um, first of all, internally how we, we feel about it. Um, you know, we get very, very excited in the office. It's our opportunity to um, talk about some of the new stuff that we have out there, um, whether it be promotions, whether it be some new markets or some new states. And it really energizes us in the, in the, in the corporate office. It gets everybody um, excited about it. We have a lot of cool stuff we have planned. We have a lot of work to do. I can tell you we have a lot of really, really cool tools coming out as well. Um, it's our chance for Simulcast to really kick off the year, uh, infuse some energy into the, into the field, um, give you guys some tools you need to, to build your business. And then once Simulcast is over, we immediately start working on Ambition. And if you've been to Ambition, um, you, know, you know what I'm talking about when we say it is the premier event, not only in our company, but in any network marketing company. We go to a lot of uh, different events just to see what other people are doing. I can tell you, we blow the socks off of them. Um, and part of it is the energy and enthusiasm you guys bring. And, and it just really infuses us with that energy to go and make things happen through the rest of the year. So we really push toward those two events, Simulcast at the beginning of the year, ambition towards the end of the year and then in between we just try to get out here as much as possible and um and help you um, bring you the tools you need to to build your business so i, I get i get excited i get fired up um, as you can tell I, i'm easily excitable but um <laughs> it, it it's it's good because it, it's good that i'm part of this company because there's so many exciting and fun things happening um not only with you guys but with um you know the events that we have so it it keeps me energized and hopefully <laughs> You guys who haven't been, talk to somebody who has, and I think they'll tell you, you need to, you need to be at these events, you need to be a part of it. Because you come out of that, you get shot out of a cannon, and um, the tools and the promotions and things we give you, um, it, it has been proven that the people who attend our events are, are much more successful than those who don't. So I challenge you to get there and get as many people as possible there. Daryl, you got anything to add? Yeah, I mean, I'm the spreadsheet nerd, so. He really, um, he really is, he's not kidding. I can, show, I, can show, I can show you numbers if you want to talk. Uh, no, it, it's, it's exactly that. It's a proven fact that people who attend events uh, make more money and are more successful in this business than those who don't. Mm -hmm. It's just a simple fact. Um, I, literally, I've studied this for like eight years. Mm -hmm. I've looked at people not, who didn't just sign up three days before an event and said, ah, I don't know about that, I won't go. We looked at people who joined, who worked the business consistently for months at a time, a year at a time, but just for whatever reason couldn't go, chose not to go, uh, and mirrored them with people who did the same that went and it's always true the people who attend events make more promote more um, it's you know those who go as MCs are four times more lo likely to promote to RC if they go to an event and that's just been consistent every year uh, those who are, go as RC you know become SC at a higher rate uh, SEs who go and those who don't go they make almost a hundred percent more for the ones who do go they double their income over the ones who don't go. It's just, and there's no stats on EC because you all go. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what happens if you don't. Because you don't go to EC, I guess. Speaking of saying that, I do, I do have to make a public apology. It's National Consultant yeah. Near yeah. Golem. Yeah. So my apology, Near. Yeah. So, so let's, let's get all around the board. I mean, you guys have been here basically since the company was a year or so old. So you saw the explosive growth. You saw where the company had to make some changes to, you know, because we, we grew so much, so y'all had to make changes in-house. And, and so, but let's get to today. 
because we were talking last week and you guys kind of excited me with it that in 2016 we're going to see more of corporate and consultant interlocking at events and, and meetings just all around the country i don't want you to get details i know you can't but what's the what's the idea behind all that well i'll start with that it's one can't happen without the other and that's just the way it is it's the way it was set up the way it's designed because that's what works and you know we like to think that you guys need us a little bit uh we know for a fact we need you 100 um, percent and go back to what eric said we love being out there it, it's just part of it, it it's we don't do this you don't use the consultant channel as just simply that a channel a way to do it it's you know it goes back kind of what i said earlier tonight um, you have two gentlemen who start a company who um, are entrepreneurs you know they love that lifestyle they love that mindset they love surround themselves with people who have the same mindset who are willing to take a chance mm -hmm. who you know go forward with nothing but faith and hope to see what would happen because they know what will happen if they don't so let's just try it and, and they want to invest in you guys and they've built this comp plan that has done that and many people have taken advantage of it and many people have it you know um, but we want to make sure that we're constantly together you know Eric and I for years what we've done and what we've built and helped lead in the company uh, is all been based on consultant feedback you know I won't speak for Eric but when he started his training you know I know he met constantly with Brian and Steve and you know and, and Carlos and some of the early folks about what works what doesn't work and perfected the training systems that are out there uh, the power zone we, you know we have this new power zone but the one you've been used to uh, was fully developed by consultants we spent a year working with consultants and what works what do you want to see what would be helpful to your business and, and that took a whole year to just kind of perfect that and it was you know the, the shining example and the star in the industry for back back offices and now we're trying to take it to the next level and go mobile and, and there's so much more we can do with that uh, but we can only do that and go forward if we have your advice um, and, and your agreement and what works and so uh, yeah we want to have the big events we want to partner with you with the smaller events uh, we want to try to uh, figure out ways to get Chris and Jerry in front of you more often uh, these poor gentlemen work so hard and you know early days they could do a lot what Eric and I do now uh, they just can't the company you know you've made it such a success and it's so big you know they, they just are kind of locked in uh, so we're going to try to get creative in ways to get them in front of you folks uh, and, and try to make sure everybody gets to meet them one way or another. That's cool. Uh, people are going to like that, you know, because there's people that have been in for a few months or e maybe even a year that maybe tonight was the first time they've gotten to see anybody from corporate. And I, I know people will get excited about just knowing that you guys are going to be out there more. Anything you want to add, Mr. Boom? First of all, no pressure. Um, <laughs> I'm going to be out there more. Yeah, so I um, know we yeah there i have i have we've had periods of time where we just put our head down and got stuff done and what we found was when we're put our lift our head up and actually get out here in the field and talk to leaders talk to talk to people like chris and find out what they need it helps us do a much more effective job so um selfishly just from the standpoint of you know the teams and stuff that we have new people coming into our organization from an internal standpoint we need that feedback and we want that feedback and so um we're going to be we're going to be asking a lot more people for it and um hopefully listening more and being out here more so um I guess the good news or bad news, however you look at it, you're probably going to see more of us. So um, we're excited about it. Uh, maybe good news see me, bad news see Daryl. We'll, 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 uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, so let, let's talk this because you guys have been here how many? Eight, eight, eight years? years? Eight years here. But you guys were with Excel for a decade, right? So it's another networking company on the corporate side. So that's literally two decades of corporate experience on an MLM company. So let me lead into the question this way has, has ambit energy or excel did they ever hire someone that they also had to let go rather quickly did anybody ever join the corporate office and quit within a month or two has that ever happened occasionally it happens yeah. so so when that person was quitting did you guys go like grab them by their leg and try to make them stay or did you kind of just open the door and let them go i was i was a little more passive aggressive about it i think <laughs> um, I, I, I told them that they are they were they're not realizing what mistake they were making if they left on their own volition um they won't realize what mistake that they were making or how much they could learn from a, a company that is growing so fast um and they would look back on it and they would regret it 
So let's translate that again two decades of experience because there's a lot of consultants that join. I mean you said it a minute ago the marketing consultants that attend the two big events are four times more likely to promote than the ones that don't. So that means there's some that never promote, yes? Correct. Yes. So help us along the way. I mean, from what from where y'all are able to see, can you give any advice on how people should work with others? Is I mean, do we get to a point to where we just gotta say, well if you show up we'll help? Yeah, I mean you write the trainings. What do you think? All right, so that's a that's a long question, huh? <laughs> Just be honest. Just be honest. People want to hear. All right, no, they, I, they get tired of me saying, "If the guy doesn't show up, stop calling me." Yeah, yeah I, I, we do. We have a training system. Um, Chris Atkinson, I'll kind of let a little bit out. He was kind enough to come to Dallas and, and help us train our new um, Jumpstart training videos, which are coming out very very soon. Hint hint. So, um, and, and you know, we have our proven system and it's there, but the, the, the biggest thing when you plug into that system and think about it is it's all about the conversations and just having a conversation with somebody and finding out what they do, what they want out of life, what their why is, and it really is that conversation and it's tough sometimes because I can remember when I worked at Excel, working in network marketing, coming out of college, as your dad would say, expected to come out of college, get a job, I got, I got student loans to pay. Luckily I took a job at Excel because it was one of the few jobs that were around, to be honest. Um, met three of the most important people um, in, in, in my life, Daryl, Chris Chambliss, and my wife Karen, um, at Excel. But that was a pretty good company to go to work for. It was a, it was a really good company. Yeah, so um, I'm just I'm just making sure I'm not going to say any blue comments or anything on this because we're being we're being filmed. But uh, no, uh, it, it was a it was a great great company, great experience to work for. But I can remember back when I was first coming out of college and working for a network marketing company. Some of my friends asked me what I would do, and I would mention network marketing, and there were some negative connotations to that. And for a while there, I was embarrassed to tell people what I did and and I could always think back and after I worked for Excel for a while and then came and got to meet Chris and Jerry and John and be a part of Ambit I realized my mistakes of the past and I was proud to be a part of network marketing so I think there is a lot of negative stuff that goes on out there I get it it's hard to come and talk to somebody and and start that conversation about it because I've done that and I've had that issue as well but um, I would just say be proud about what you do not everybody can do what we do but at the same time not everybody can be as successful as we can be by doing this so um, I would just challenge you to get out there and, and, and take that chance and leap of faith and talk to somebody about the opportunity you'd be surprised what, what, what could happen Man. You can. I got, I got something to say, Chris. We're tired up now. We got, we got to preach right now. <laughs> now, I, I think the two hardest things in this business, from my perspective, is talking to people. A lot of pe everybody wants to make more money. Very few people want to earn it. It's just hard. I, everybody wants to, you know, go buy the lottery tickets, $1.3 billion that's out there, and everybody's going to swing by and pick a ticket, you know. But very few people will go do the steps to just go earn it themselves, you know. And so uh, it's just hard. And the ones that will push through it um, and, and do it, and first of all, you know, one uh, sidetrack, went to a training, and one of the most eye-opening experiences I had was a training in East Texas, and they did a three-way call demonstration live on stage and they called someone and I thought my I was like, they're, they're doing they're gonna do this they're gonna call someone right now mic'd up and do a three-way and all of a sudden I've never done a three-way I've never called someone and then tried to put someone on to talk edify and go through that process and I felt all that nervousness for him I got you know sweaty palms I'm like what if he like freaks out what if he cusses on the phone what happened you know and so it's hard to go through that process but the ones that do afterwards were like yes <laughs> you know because it, it got an invitation and they and they said they'd look at it uh, but it's hard to do that and so most people will not um, so you have to be really proud of yourself if you're one of the few who do that because it's a unique ability that you have or you've overcome this thing the other hardest thing you'll face in this business is watching the people who don't do it and, and give up on themselves you know I don't know if it's just because the way we're wired as people and humans uh, but we all have this big no wall in front of us you know and, and we just want to just immediately say no 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 and and you have to get past that and most people can't handle it and I always kind of like it when I talk about my testimonials in this business is the power of meetings trainings like this and coming here 
every week. You should try to bring a guest every single week, but if you don't, get here anyway, because there's power in that. I believe I'm a better person on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday because than I am on Thursday, Friday, Saturday because I go to church on Sunday. And I surround myself with people who are positive and they're excited and believe what I believe. And whether it's you know religion or just this business, you know it's probably sacrilegious to compare the two. Uh, <laughs> but you're, you know everybody in this room wants more for themselves, and they're willing to do something about it. And and you got to surround yourself with people like that. And and so it's. Uh, most people won't do what you do, so be proud of yourself and celebrate yourself and each other um, and come to this stuff and your tagline of people helping people is what this is about because success is really hard if you don't. Your, your training story reminds me, we, we did what's called a blitz training. It was about eight weeks long and we met every Wednesday up here at the center and on one Wednesday we said now next week everybody bring your written list. I don't care how big it is, it could be 50 names or 5,000, but everybody bring your written list and it's for a contest, you know, who brings it's going to win the prize. And that was a, a tad bit of a white lie because what we did is when they showed up and had their list, then we broke into groups and we made invitation calls live with 100 people in the room. And, and we did it for 15 minutes and th there was a few people that had, you know, 5 and 10 presentation set up just because they made phone calls but it's it, sometimes we got to force ourselves into seeing success because there's gonna be a lot of people that they leave this event and they're gonna go home and see what's on TV instead of doing that go to YouTube and see what Zig Ziglar has to say you know go pull up Tony Robbins pull up something that that's gonna help you to better yourself leave the TV alone you know and, and continue to listen and learn and if we do that I think we're all going to be better people so now you just brought a question I wasn't going to ask because you just Good said I, I don't think everybody knows this but you just said the three people you met at Excel Daryl yes. your, your wife and Chris yes now you know we always tell the story that Chris was you know employee number 52 at Excel but y'all were 53 and 54 correct We'll see, Chris Chambliss, C, comes before J, so John Stone, and then Starkweather. So yeah, I was probably like maybe 40, 57 or something like that. So yeah, okay. whatever it fell in the alphabetical list. So, so you guys met at Excel, started in the call center, right? Yes. And so the three of you together, working in the call center, and, and you know, nobody ever holds it back. I mean, y'all's the one that told me that Chambliss was at a point in his life where he was looking because he he already had the wife and the kid he was ready to go set himself up so he got promoted time because he just showed up early stayed late worked hard whatever that's great but now let's go 20 years later chris chambliss has gone from being the in the hiring <coughs> class with you guys to being co-founder of ambit energy the fastest growing company in america i mean leave money out of the equation is he the same guy today yes yes absolutely that was a hell of an answer. I mean, <laughs> to me, that's what's so cool. Because one of the things that we've taught is that all money does is magnify who you currently are. That's it. So don't be afraid of it. Some people come up to me and say that they're scared of success. That makes no sense to me. Some people come up to me and say they're scared of money. That makes no Money has never talked back to me. So I don't know how to be scared of it. I don't know how to be scared of it. And I honestly do not know one thing that we can do without money. You cannot take a drink of water out of your faucet at home without money. It's going to cost you. Somebody tried to tell me one time when I said that, I have a well. <laughs> Did it just get put in the ground for free? You paid for it at some point. And if it ever needs a repair, you're going to pay for it again. There's not anything we can do in this world that's just free. Except maybe get our electricity and our gas. You know? So w when people tell me that, I've come to understand something, that accountability is where it's at. Accountability separates the well-wishers from the achievers. You know, there's some of us that just, I wish, right? I wish I could win that lottery. And I admit I bought a ticket today. But, 
But there's nothing I can do there except this. You got yours in your pocket? No, I'm just thinking, how many people be mad if he actually wins that lottery? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, I, I promise you, I'll share people helping people. Chris have his own zero down. <laughs> yeah, but but you know, all I can do is wish for that. That's it. Yeah. There's nothing I can do to make myself win. Buying more tickets doesn't make me any more likely to win, right? So that, that's just a wish. But if I'm sitting in the audience watching this and I want to become a national consultant, I know I can. If I want to earn a million dollars, I know I can. I saw the proof tonight. And I can see the proof at meetings I go to around the country. Those folks that got the jackets just decided to do more than wish. They decided to hold themselves accountable so they could take action. And, and you were telling me a story, that's why I said that. You were telling me a story how you two guys, how you work so well together that, you know, if one of you is having a good and one is having a bad day, you're able to boost each other's energy. Is that, mm -hmm. I mean, is that just a big part of life? Absolutely. I mean, you know, it's, we know you guys have bad days. Like I said, we have bad days as well. Something will go, something will go wrong in the field. There'll be an issue that comes up and, and we bleed right along with you guys. We know you guys have it a lot, a lot worse because people on your team are calling you up, something's going wrong, but we get those calls. We get that feeling and Daryl and I have known each other for a long time, been friends for a long time. And it's, and it is a, an important relationship that we are able to, you know, both of us can't be up all the time, but good, good news is both of us aren't down all the time. We've got a lot of really good people around in the corporate office that helps us as well. And, um, you know, it, it, it's, a, it's a, a great, great relationship. Our teams kind of cross over with the stuff that we do. Um, our job, one of our jobs is to make sure that we're mentoring our teams as much as possible to understand that all you guys are out here uh, building a business on the front lines as our, our volunteer armies, we like to call you guys, um, working hard. So we make sure that we're working as hard as you guys are to, to, to do that. And so Daryl and I keep each other honest sometimes, you know, there's, there's, it's, there's the good and the bad, but um, it, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't change it, change it for the world. So Mr. Spreadsheet. He really is. I mean, you know, there's little formulas and stuff. He can do all that stuff. It's crazy. So if I need anything spreadsheet, I go and talk to him. So, <laughs> so you have a decade of spreadsheet in front of you. Yeah. You know what's coming at Simulcast. Mm -hmm. You already know what's coming at an Ambition. Mm -hmm. You already know basically how many people are going to show up for each event, right? I mean, because you have the blueprint. Mm -hmm. What's 2016 going to be? You know what? To me, it seems almost like, and it could be cheesy to say out loud, but almost like a rebirth, like we're going back to the 2008 time frame. Um, you know, we have, those who've been in, to this, in this business for a couple of years, you experience this massive growth and expansion. And there was a strategic decision made at the corporate office to, to get everywhere we can get faster than anybody else. We didn't want, because of just the industry and what people can do with it uh, and take advantage of the direct sales channel, uh, we knew there'd be copycats. As soon as we had success, people would say, oh, that's the way you make money. You start an energy company and add a channel to it, direct sales, and, and it just happens. And it just, it doesn't. There's a, some magic and some things that have to happen to come together, to, you know, for that success. Um, and very few companies have it, and we do. Uh, so we didn't want any company going into markets before us and putting a bad taste in their mouth. And so uh, we worked really hard, and a lot of people back at the office worked hard to get in, in a couple years really uh, to all the markets that make sense that are easy. Uh, and so we're kind of at this point where, um, you know, natural expansion and, you know, four states a year and that kind of stuff that we saw, just, they're not there. We're kind of waiting on the rest of the United States to catch up with us. We're here, we're ready to go. As soon as they deregulate or something changes, boom, we can we can act and go. Um, but the beauty of that is, you know, you go look at some of these companies like Walmart and, and, and their growth, mm -hmm. you know, and you know they would drop a store and they don't build a bunch of stores around it. They saturate that market. You know, there's the whole mom and pop part of that, which we won't talk about. But you know, that's their success, and, and then they, they just kind of dominate that market. Uh, but they let it time to mature. And when you have fast expansion from state to state to state. Uh, the negative side of that is some of the experience is your leadership gets real thin uh, because you haven't had time to mature your organization and grow leaders and train uh, because you're jumping a, a border here a state line here to start new things and so uh, it happens so we expand faster but your organization doesn't grow as fast uh, when you actually slow expansion your organization can grow faster 
because you can spend more time where you're at and, and develop those leaders and grow. And so part of our focus 2016 and what you'd mentioned earlier, get back in the field and do certain things is take advantage of that. While we have this little bit of breather, now we're gonna expand, don't make panic, um, but it's not the same pace, but we can grow bigger and we can develop more leaders and, and get stronger in the areas that we're at uh, so that as other markets that we don't even know about open up, you know, that, that we just were that much bigger and can take it over. And so, you know, we really want to focus on solar this year and see where we can push that. It's new to us, and we've kind of been tiptoeing for the last six months. Um, but that's not good enough for us. We want to go blow this thing out uh, and really grow that base so that when the next innovation and that, mark, that thing happens, that we're ready to go. And so I just think 2016 is, is a year of, of just kind of your personal organization development. You know, let's just don't worry about, you know, going across the country to start a new meeting and do this kind of stuff, you know, build what you got. You know, you got so many leaders here, Houston and Texas, you guys, come on, Texas. <laughs> Turn off the camera and everybody in the Northeast, come on, Texas. You guys get paid more money and you're so big. You know, it's amazing the dollars that could be paid out in this state if we just grow. You have so many leaders in this area alone um, it just, I think you, you just invited half of the Northeast SCs in the Texas. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, you know, part of our nice Southern genteel or, you know, nature of, well, I'll call you back. Well, let me think about it. You know, people in New, New York and Northeast, they're like, I got stuff to do. Either you're in or you're out. I'm moving on. And they make decisions and they move. And that is basically the, you know, the, the secret to their fast, explosive growth is they don't wait. They take this serious and either you're gonna do this with them or you're not, and that's fine, but I gotta go. Give me a decision, yes or no. Uh, maybe think about it, we'll come back to you. I got someone else to talk to. And I think in Texas, we're just a little slower, a little nicer, you know, I think maybe we get a little attitude. You know, be proud of what we got, and if you don't see it, we understand it, but let's do it. And so 2016, again, is, I think it's, it's the time that we need to just explode this thing. And, particularly here in Texas. Well, I, you know, look, we're excited about it. I, I know we are. The, the, I know the leadership is excited about the year. So we're, we're getting close to time. So last question, you know, January 29th, the uh, promotion comes to an end. So what's the new one? <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> so, Your turn. so I think this is what everybody wants to hear. And feel free, both of you. Chris and Jerry, I mean, when it says on that slide, integrity, finest, and most respected, you know, for those that have been fortunate enough to go to the corporate office and take a tour and meet everyone, maybe their feeling is a little bit different because they've seen it in person, hands-on. So for, for everybody watching, give us your opinion of why should we trust Ambit Energy's corporate office? I'll start. I want to start by saying that I love all markets the same. By the way. <laughs> <laughs> Texas, Florida. Touche. <laughs> no. I, I guess I'll answer the question just because, just like a lot of you who joined the business, it's you, there's a leap of faith at some point to, to be a part of the company. So when I got, um, when Chris asked me to come down and talk to him about being a part of Ambit, I got to meet Jerry, I got to meet John. I got to talk to them and see the, the integrity and how they were building the business and all the systems they had in place. Um, I couldn't believe um, with the number of customers that were, that were in the door, there wasn't a ton, just the, the system and platforms and stuff that they had built and the investment they had already made in the business. And I knew Chris, I got to meet Jerry. Um, if you talk to Jerry for five minutes, you know that's a man of integrity as well. And see John and his passion and his excitement. So, I took a leap of faith. I had a good job that I was getting ready to start, and um, I had to call them and tell them that um, I, I'd found something different that was an opportunity I wanted to be a part of. So just like all of you guys, I took a leap of faith, and that was eight years ago, and I haven't looked back. And I have seen many, 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 many times where Chris and Jerry could skimp, could scrimp, or I don't know the right word, but they could, they could take a shortcut. They could do something that would be more profitable maybe for the company, but wouldn't be good for the field. It wouldn't be good for our customers. So. They make business decisions. They have to make business decisions from a financial standpoint, but I have seen them time and time and time and time again make the investment and do the right thing for this business. And so that's why I am just as excited about 2016 as I was when I was coming in meeting them in 2000, I guess seven was when I was here. So um, I, I, I'm, I'm just excited and I'm, I'm blessed and lucky to be here. So, 
Yeah, I'll echo that. <laughs> it's, meet Jerry Thompson and Chris Chambliss face to face, and you'll answer that question for yourself. Um, you know, it's your name is is everything, and uh, you know, two gentlemen run this, this ship and started this thing who, who care about that. Um, you know, it's this is wasn't started as this. You know. I think this will be successful. We can drag a lot of money out of this, you know, and sell it off or, or whatever may happen. Um, you know, there was thought put in this. And it, it's people that drive it, and they really, really do care. Um, you know, and, and, they, and they love you guys and what you've done. They're appreciative. You know, it was, we wouldn't have anything if the field hadn't done something. You know, maybe it didn't work and they would have gone to, you know, the, the traditional marketing way. But who knows what that would have happened. I can't imagine it would have the success that it had. Um, but but they, they hurt when you hurt. They're, they're happy when you are. They celebrate when you celebrate. Um, you know, little snippet of that is we were, I was, over the holidays, at Christmas, I, I would took some time off. But, you know, Chris and Jerry, they do uh, lunches at the two offices for all the employees. Right. And they bring food in, and they're there with them and serve food and that kind of stuff. Um, it just so happened I was at the Plano, which is the operations center where the call centers are, customer care and consult support. And I was dropping off some, some gifts to some people, and I had my two kids with me. And, um, and if I'd known Jerry was going to be there, I wouldn't have taken the kids, but I did. Um, but he just got talking, and he's asked about the holiday and your break and how's things going. And he, was, and he always asks, how's, how's the field? You know, that's, that's what he wants to know. How's everybody doing? What's, how's it going? I said, it's great. And he goes, well, do you mind? He goes, could you include me more this year? He said, I, I feel a bit underutilized. Wow. And the first thing I thought of is shame on us. You know, um, you, you, you think he's so busy in doing all the, these things, and he is, um, that, you know, you, you kind of program yourself that maybe it, let's don't bother him. We'll go. We'll get out there. And the whole time he's sitting over there at his desk going, I wish they'd use me more. You know, and so I think that sums up corporate and Jerry, and they care, and um, every decision they make, they have to make for the good of the company, not the individual. Every decision I make is, you know, you know, for my group and what we're doing and what you do is for you. Chris and Jerry have the responsibility of everybody, and it may not line up with you at that moment, uh, but it's done to grow this and make sure it's secure for everybody because they know what's at stake and how many people survive and depend on what they make here um, and so it's um, it, it's because of them that you should trust them you know I guess we'll leave everybody with this because I remember y'all sitting down with us early on and, and there was a whole group of us but we all came to the same understanding it's it's two separate things there, there's the field that's all of us but then there's the corporate office but if you understand how it gets together without us they're filling out applications somewhere else, right? Mm -hmm. But if you have the wrong people making the decisions, you and I are paying another entry fee to join something else. And that's why I've always felt comfortable. I've seen this company from day one, and I've seen them get rid of some people because the person they wanted for that position was finally available. And they got that together now. And that's why I believe 2016 is going to be phenomenal. I mean, you've heard it. You know, I mean, it's no secret. Some more expansions, great. But it's time for people now. You know, it, it's time for people. You know, I, I have people everywhere I go, they ask me, well, when are we opening up Kentucky? <laughs> I don't know, but your neighbor can get started right now. <laughs> You know, I mean, sometimes we forget about simple. And so I'm happy if they slow the expansion a little bit. Because there is no place I ever go where it's not wide open. Every city I go to to do a meeting, it is wide open in that city. You know, so we have so much room for so much growth right where we are. So before we go, any last parting comments? 
I'm glad y'all let us into your living room for a few minutes here, wherever you are. So uh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to be here. This is uh, this has been fun. I didn't know what to expect, but um, hey, this is this has been this has been great. So um, thank you for the hospitality, and like I said, we're we're fired up for 2016. So, boom. <laughs> How you follow that other than it, it may be a commercial for simulcast uh, uh, yeah they're filling up fast you need to get there or watch online do a watching party it was a tremendous success last year the way we did it uh, I think this the first ever simulcast and business presentation will be a huge success I hope people copy that and use it to their advantage um, we're in the throes of planning our tenth ambition um, you got a little extra money to spend this year, so we're gonna, we're gonna plan uh, the party of the year. Uh, but don't let the party tagline fool you. Uh, it, it's a it's a true investment in your business, as most of these events are. Uh, uh, they really do elevate you in your business, and I would get to as many as you can. Uh, and you know, the person who has the most team members there wins. So, so go grow your business. Don't wait on the next event to then grow, grow, grow first and take them all with you. So Amen. We're excited. Let's do it again. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So here's what we're going to do. Give us, give us a couple of days, okay? But I promise you on our website, team526.biz, you'll see the edited version of this. You'll see the, the business presentation that we just did. Okay, it's going to be there. It's going to be available. I hope you use it. Right? If you have a tool that you don't ever open the toolbox of, it's not going to do you any good. So use the tools to help you to build your business. Okay? 2016 is the year we've all been waiting for. It's here right now. Hey, big props and thank you to Mr. Daryl Starkweather and Eric Johnstone for joining us tonight. Hey folks, they do have a they do have something they have to get to. So if you shake their hand quickly on the way out, that's why they got here a little early so they can mix and mingle too. I'm a hugger too. I like hugs. So don't be don't be shy. <laughs>